So I'm definitely going to tell you something that most watch fans completely already know. The Rolex Milgauss is discontinued. I'm a little sad about this as I think it's one of their quirkier offerings and I'm kind of sad to see it go, but I'm going to let you know a secret about that Milgauss that, well, not too many people out there know. I've actually never tried one on before. When Rolex was somewhat available, you know, you know the Rolex game, it's there but it's really not there, I was never able to try one on. And now that it's discontinued and you can only get it through the secondary market or pre-owned, I've never had the opportunity. Good news, a friend of mine just bought a Rolex Z Blue and I have to tell you, I love it. Welcome to another episode of Pocket Watch Time. My name is Patrick W. And today we're going to discuss a little bit about Rolex. And for those of you who have watched this channel before and if you've heard some of my takes on particular brands, Rolex, well, they have a good and a bad place in my heart. The good, they make wonderful watches. They're very reliable. They're very tough. They're wonderful timekeepers. The bad of all of that, they're just a little bit plain. And I like a watch that has at least a little bit of personality, a little bit of some inventive flavor to it, and Rolex used to do that, but they don't really do it so much. And the avenue that they used to do that in was the Milgauss range. And that's what we're talking about today. The discontinued Milgauss was the fun, experimental side of Rolex, and I'm really disappointed that it, well, discontinued. I finally was able to try on and evaluate one of these for myself. And that's kind of what today's show is about. My friend picked up the Milgauss in my favorite variation, the green crystal blue dial, lovingly referred to as the Z Blue. It's pretty amazing to me that this is the first time that I've actually ever held and or seen in person a true Milgauss. I think I've held maybe one of the display-only models. It didn't work, so I, I, you just don't get the same feel of a watch if it's not actually ticking in your hand. But I don't think it was the Z Blue variant, which, as I said a minute ago, is my favorite variant. What I really like about this watch is it just has style. Combination of that green crystal, this 100% beautiful sunray blue dial, a dial that Rolex just doesn't do justice in its normal catalog with. I mean, this, as far as I know, I don't think they have a, a current model that has a dial anything like this. And that's an absolute shame. This dial is gorgeous. Some people may or may not like the little pops of orange and the, the orange second hand. Maybe it's a little bit gimmicky, but wrap it all up, I think the green, the blue, the orange, it just, it adds so much fun to a watch that lives in a brand that doesn't have that much fun. And that's why I definitely think this is one of my favorite of all time Rolex models, because it just knows how to have fun. The bad of this model, well, it's discontinued. So there's no new Milgauss. Will there be a new Milgauss? Man, that would be very interesting because the part about this watch that I'll discuss a little bit here is why I think a new version would be so cool. So a buddy of mine bought this watch and I'm just on loan with it just to try it on here. He bought it because, well, he's a scientist and he thinks, of course, I want the scientist watch and I completely get it. That is the branding, that is what the Milgauss is for and I think that's really cool. The problem is, it's like 1980s scientist tech. I think the new Milgauss would be so much cooler if it brought in some of the current 2024 spec because this version has a Faraday cage and for those who don't know what that means, it pretty much means there's a metal box within a metal box and that's there to disrupt the magnetic signals that are 
pretty much everywhere, from your cell phone to your computer. All these little magnetic charges can sometimes make the timing of your watch inaccurate, or worst case scenario, make it really inaccurate. To be fair though, the Faraday cage is kind of obsolete. There is much better technology out there right now than wrapping your watch up in two metal cases to protect it from magnetism. So even though it's a perfectly good technology, and well, it absolutely works in this watch, I would hope that in a future model of what might be a Milgauss would have a silicone escapement. Instead of making a watch that's just anti-magnetic, make a watch that's truly amagnetic. That would be pretty cool. And definitely for all the scientists out there, then you don't have to worry about anything. Now I've got a little bit of a minor pet peeve regarding just the looks of the watch, and that's having the polished surfaces. I'm not against having polish on a watch. I just feel that if it's a tool watch or if they're calling it a scientist's watch and this watch is going to be clunked around and do a bunch of experiments and have all this possibility of damaging your watch, I just think it shouldn't have all the polish. I think if it had just a brushed surface, it, it might just be more resilient looking. Looking at the watch, the polish does pop. The polish is absolutely beautiful. So 100% this is just an opinion piece on me. If they made a new version of the Milgauss, I want it to have 2024 spec, but I would love it to maybe just be a little less blingy and have more of a brushed aesthetic. So besides the change that I would make for future models if Rolex decides to release a future Milgauss, and just my personal opinion of what might make the watch look a little bit better, I think the Milgauss is a 100% home run. And this model particularly, I just think this green with the blue dial, it just has so much flavor. And that's, that's how I like my coffee and that's how I like my watches. I just want it to have some personality. I want it to have a little bit of zest. And this watch is the rare zesty version of a Rolex. And I'm really sad that it's gone. I think Rolex really dropped the ball by removing this and we'll see if they pick up the ball and they release a new version in the future. So a big shout out to my buddy for letting me borrow his watch. I'm still pretty surprised that I'd never actually tried on and or seen in person a Z Blue. Even at watch events, I've never run into somebody who wore a Z Blue. And that kind of surprises me because I know it wasn't the most popular watch for the last decade or so, but as it was starting to get into the world of discontinuation rumors, it really picked up some steam. And I know there's lots of collectors out there who bought them just to hold on to them because they're getting discontinued, but I kind of think it's a pretty popular model and I'm just surprised I've never seen one at a red bar or just a watch meetup. But now that I actually have worn the watch, you know, I, I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the, the watch itself is just cool and it's fun to wear. And even though you know, I didn't really take it out of the house, so I didn't wear it around the streets, I feel like this would be a watch that someone would actually notice and say, hey, that's a pretty cool looking watch. And for any of the other big watch nerds out there like me, nothing makes me happier than if I'm out somewhere and someone strikes up a conversation because you're wearing a cool watch. That just means I get to ask them, hey, what are you wearing? What do you like? And, you know, you strike up a conversation and I think that's so cool. If you're wearing a boring watch, no one's going to ask you that. So for that reason, as I said, the, the Rolex Milgauss and particularly the Z Blue variant, I just think it's an absolute joy. And I really do hope that Rolex brings something back similar. My fear is maybe they'll bring back the Milgauss name, but they'll take away the green crystal or they won't have a fun seconds hand or they won't have interesting dials. And, you know, if you take all the flavor away from it, uh, it's just going to be another boring Rolex. So Z Blue, you've got personality and I think that's great. And Rolex, I hope you make a new version similar to the old version, but just a little bit more tech savvy. That would be awesome. And I would definitely put my name down for that at the authorized dealer. So now my question to you, what's your favorite Milgauss? Do you like it? Do you think it's kind of gimmicky and just not your thing? Or are you kind of like me and you like the weird colors? Do you like the 
black dial with the green? Do you like the blue dial with the green? They've got one that's got the nickname the Tic Tac, which I guess is the white with just the orange indices. And you know, they're, they're interesting. So just curious, what do you guys think is the best Milgauss? And if they do bring it back, what would you like to see as an improvement? Well, thanks for watching guys. That's all I've got this week. If you've got any comments about anything else, or if you like this kind of video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this channel, give it a subscription, please. And I'll catch you next week in a new episode. If you enjoyed this content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. Please leave a like, or maybe even a comment or a question. The YouTube algorithm loves it when you do that, and it helps the channel. And speaking of helping the channel, I've got two avenues where you can donate to the channel. You can join right here on YouTube, by becoming a YouTube member, or you can follow the link in the description and join my Patreon. Thank you, I really do appreciate it.